my name is Pond Observer, and this is another scary Reddit reading. Now, this story comes from the no sleep section of Reddit. It is titled, It Saw Me, and it was posted by user, this is Friday, about a day ago. So, let's see what um, user This Is Friday has to say. Let this be a warning. If you see this creature outside of your house, do not let it see you. Soon my days will end, all because I was too foolish to listen to my wife. She had always been a little naive. At least that's how I would describe her before last night. Now I see that she was open-minded. No, no rather, she was educated on the matter. We met six years ago at church. I had just moved to town and she was the preacher's daughter. So, of course I hit on her. We hit it off, and we've been married for three years now. I know what you're wondering, and yes, we did wait until marriage. Man, that was difficult. Anyway, here in town, they have a lot of old folk tales about things that lurk in the night. But I never believed them. It's a scare tactic, I always said. I figured they wanted to mess with the kids. I mean, I never had any encounters until last night. But Sophie, my wife, always insisted that the stories were real. I once asked her why she believed them, and she just told me about her brother. I didn't know she had a brother. I didn't know because he had died seven years before I came to town. He was up late one night working on an awful when he decided to go to the kitchen for a snack. As he was washing his hands at the sink, he looked out into the backyard and saw what appeared to be a man looking up in, at the moon. Hugh, my wife's dead brother, was like me. He heard the stories. He didn't believe them. Sophie didn't either before Hugh died. Hugh was obviously concerned that there was a stranger lurking in his yard. He turned the kitchen light on, and then it saw him. Sophie says she doesn't know what happened next. Hugh muttered the rest of the story when asked about it. But a few days later, he was found dead in the backyard. The only thing is there was nothing wrong with him. Absolutely nothing. He was like the poster boy for good health. His skin was beautiful. His hair was full. His teeth looked like they were sculpted by the gods. Despite the fact that he had a couple of fillings before this ordeal. There was no signs of a struggle signs of injury or illness. He was simply dead and gone. Every time I had to be out at about after hours, Sophie would forget to say, don't let it. Sophie would never forget to say, don't let it see you. I heard the story about you, but I was too stubborn, too foolish, too proud. Maybe monsters aren't real, I thought. We all feel safe because we think the things we read about on our no sleep are just fictional. But I'm telling you, they're real. At least this thing is. Last night I was in the garage working on a birthday present for Sophie. It's a giant heart. Yes, I'm corny and not very creative. But so what? I'm going to die. As I was getting a bottle of water from the fridge I have down there. I notice movement on the security feed. Then I see it. 
the back of a man who just walked past the camera. He has stopped and is looking down at the grass. I instantly remember the story about you, but I didn't think this was anything other than an intruder. He was wearing clothes, dark clothes, mind you, but clothes. How powerful could he be? I didn't see a weapon anywhere on him, but I know I had one. The problem is that weapon, a gun, was upstairs. And to get it, I'd have to take my eyes off the security feed. I debated about what I should do. But I didn't want to lose track of the guy. That's when he stretched. Not like you or I stretched to loosen up. I mean, his neck began extending from his body and turning around towards the house. That's when I, I first got a glimpse of his face. Had it been burned? Had it been rotting? Had it been trampled? Was it just sinking in? I don't know the answer, but those were the questions I had about what I saw that on that thing's head. And those eyes, those cold gray eyes, and with that tiny red dot on the center of each one, I was horrified. I was frozen in fear. The stories were true, but he couldn't see me. It didn't matter, but he was looking not for me, not for anyone in particular. He was just looking for someone to torment. His neck, how it incredibly long and flimsy thing, he began looking in the windows of my house. He wanted to see someone but there were only two people in the house. I had no windows, but Sophie did. He was still looking through the windows on the first floor, so I had time. I took up my cell phone and called Sophie. She was awake, having woken up to go to the restroom. What is it, baby? She asked. It's here, I told her. Sophie, it's here. Instantly, she knew what I was talking about. Don't let it see you. Sophie, I started, but she cut me off. Man, it, it, don't let it see you, she pleaded in a loud whisper. I have to, I explained. I can't see me while I'm in the garage. It can't see me while I'm in the garage, she replied. Then you're safe. But you're not. I checked the security feed one more time. That creature from nowhere, shy of hell, was making its way to the second floor. It had three windows to look in. Sophie was in the third. No, don't come up there. Please stay down there, it'll kill you. She knew what I intended to do, but she wasn't stopping me. She's my wife. I'm sworn to protect her. And despite the uneasy feeling in my chest and the, and the sweat prepping to slide down my head, I made my way up the stairs. Please don't let it see you. I kicked in the door to the bathroom. I couldn't see it outside of the window. I gulped. I walked to the guest bedroom, placed my hand on the door. I turned around and saw a face sitting on a small table next to the wall behind. My grandmother gave me that face before she died. I picked it up. Sorry, Granny. I burst through the door and ran for the window, ready to throw the face through it and into the head of the intruder. But I froze inches away from the window. It looked at me and smiled, dark orange goo dripping from its pitch black teeth. Its eyes must have been unchanged but they seemed to have a look of excitement in them. I couldn't move. I was so close to something I couldn't possibly understand. And it looked at me like it had been waiting since the dawn of time itself for me to charge towards it. Finally, I mustered up enough willpower to pull the face back and chunk it through the window. It broke as it made contact with the thing's head. And then I heard it. 
the most ungodly thing any man has ever heard. Its mouth widened and it let out a loud cackle. It was as if a baby was crying and an old woman was laughing hysterically. These sounds meshed together to form something disturbing noise. When the sound subsided, it licked its lips with its bumpy white tongue. Then in a flash of darkness, yes, a flash of darkness, it disappeared. I slowly stumbled to fall backwards until I fell on my butt out in the hallway. The bedroom door opened and Sophie looked at me horrified. It saw you. Well, that was a short one. It was shorter than I expected. But um, due to time constraints, I'm not going to read the other one that I had prepared to show you guys, to read to you guys. But um, that's from R No Sleep. Uh, user, this is Friday. It saw me. Kind of a weird story. Um, probably something he made up. Um, interesting. But, um, I don't know. What do you think about the story? And what would you like me to read next? I'm going to let you decide. This is Smile Deserver, and I'm out.